only my guy had won, you know, if he, if he would have just won the primary and people could have seen how good he was, or, you know, if he, if he would have won the big one, we wouldn't have this problem. You know, unemployment wouldn't be so bad right now. We wouldn't be in all of these wars. There wouldn't be poverty anymore. If you have all these thoughts, you know, even if you were right, even if we could elect the perfect president, you would still turn on the news to find out that there were hurricanes and earthquake and sickness because even if there was a person that could do things perfectly politically, they couldn't change nature itself. And that's the other half of the good news, is that when Jesus comes back, he doesn't just come back to change injustice. He doesn't just reverse the curse of injustice. He reverses the curse of nature itself. A couple of, well, it wasn't even a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a week and a half ago, uh, we went out to Rustler's Ranch. They were having a Christmas event there. And we were telling the kids about it, and Jack was getting very excited because we told him that there were going to be crafts, and that there would be food, and singing, and that I was going to preach. Um, as a side note, I got to preach in a barn, so I got to cut a city slicker a little bit of credit for that. I preached in a barn in boots, and I got heckled by a goat. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, so anyway, we told Jack about all that, and he was excited. Uh, but the thing that he was the most excited about out of anything was that there were going to be animals in a barn there. He was very excited about this. And he got it in his head that there was going to be a tiger. We did not tell him there was going to be a tiger. He just got it in his mind that there's going to be a tiger there. We kept telling him, it's not a zoo, it's a barn. There is no tiger. But just, oh, there's going to be a tiger. There's going to be a tiger. And so we get there, we get in the barn. There's no tiger. Uh, but he's still excited because all the animals are there. Uh, but Jack's enthusiasm for these animals paled in comparison to Ellen's because she loves animals more than anything else, and she has no fear. You know, when Jack sees the animals, he's really excited about it, and when he gets up on them, he sees how big they are, and he says, they're big, and, you know, kind of, you know, sits back just a little bit. He's starting to lose a little bit of that fear, but Ellen just has no fear of these animals. You know, we were in there in the barn, and we set her down, and she's trying to climb into the pens with the animals. You know, she's gonna go give the cow a big hug around the leg. Just has no fear. And they had draft horses there, and you know, I'm trying to approach this horse so that it sees me coming and I don't spook the horse, and she has none of these reservations. She's trying to claw to get out of my you know, arms, to you know, get on top of this horse and ride it around. She just loves all these things. And as I was thinking about this, just this childlike innocence, that Jack thinks that there's going to be a tiger penned up with the sheep, and that Ellen wants to get on this draft horse and ride it around. And it brings me right to the scripture, to a time when the lion will lay down with the lamb. When a child can climb in a pen with the animals, when an infant can ride a draft horse around, when we will pen up a tiger with a sheep, because God will change the created order. He will reverse the curse and bring us back to a time when it was Adam and Eve in the garden with the animals. And there was no fear. Adam went around naming all of the animals. And I don't know what was there, but I'm sure there were some things that we wouldn't want to walk up and try to come up with a name for in person, you know? But God is going to change all of it. When Jesus comes back, he's going to reverse the curse, not just of the way that we do politics, but the very nature of the earth itself. And everything will be peace. And this child that came down, this child and the line of David, was born a king. And he came and he lived and he died for us. And he took the curse of sin. You know, when God comes and he changes everything, he won't just change politics, he won't just change nature, he changes us. He comes into us and he gives us a new heart. So that just as the tiger can't help but attack another animal, we can't help but sin today. But in that last day, God will take away the ability and even the thought that we would want to sin. And the whole earth will be peace because Jesus will reverse the curse. And so as we approach Christmas and we see people and we tell them Merry Christmas, let's see if we can also get in the conversation about what Christmas means, about how we are finally waiting for that last day when Jesus will come back. Like he came the first time, he will come again. And as we struggle in this world and we strive to be Christians and we ask for the power of the Spirit, let's remember that we're not going to do it on our own but only through God. And let's tell everyone that we meet, not just Merry Christmas, but do you know what Christmas means? Do you know what it means that Jesus is coming back to earth? That he will reverse the curse of injustice? He will reverse the curse that's been placed on nature? 
And if you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, he will reverse the curse of death that has been placed on you. Because when he came to live, he also came to die. And as he hung on the cross, he took the curse on himself. For anyone that would repent of their sins, anyone that would ask for his death to count as their own, and to follow after him as the king of the universe for the rest of time. Please pray with me. God, we thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to earth. We thank you that we get to look forward to celebrating Christmas by that first time that Jesus came, where he was born the king of all of your people. We ask that as we look back on that, we also look forward to a time when he will come back and he will judge all of us and his judgment will be perfect. And knowing that he can see into our hearts and our souls and our minds, we know of our own guilt, and so we go to you and we repent and we ask to be forgiven and to follow after you forever because we look forward to a time when you will come back and that the curse that was placed on us will be on Jesus' shoulders and you will forgive us and bring us into a world where all of creation can do nothing but praise you for the wonderful world that you have redeemed. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please continue in worship with me? as we sing at number 273.